Underground Economy, Business Off the Books Chapter 1 Business Off the Books Business Off the Books 1 The Best Government Governs Least Thomas Jefferson Even though the chances are slim you will get caught if you run a cash business, the penalties for tax evasion in the United States can be severe. In many countries, most businesses don't bother to pay taxes. In some countries, there is very little government paperwork needed to start a business like Cambodia. We have been regulated and taxed to the point of slavery but the funny thing is that most of us take it like wimps. The most common ways beyond a cash-only business are Set up a limited liability company Set up two limited liability companies, one owned by the other to muddle up your tracks. Set up two businesses, one legitimate, the other off the books. Use the one that doesn't make any OR much money as the front so to speak through which you file an income tax return and have a bank account to process transactions, launder money from the other business. Use the other business to earn money that you don't pay tax on and the first business as the one that keeps you legally covered like the mafia used to do. An ideal situation is to do a subcontracting service for a larger company. They pay you and it's your responsibility to file your own taxes as an independent contractor. An example of an ideal situation is something like this. Suppose company A's main business is to sell heating oil but in order to appear more amenable to the public, they offer a furnace repair service too even though they have nothing to do with it. Every call they get for furnace repair, they give to their buddy who's got it made. He doesn't have to solicit business thus putting himself at risk for getting caught. He just fixes the furnaces referred to him, the company collects the money and passes 90% onto him which he pockets and that's it. He doesn't even give off the perception that he's running his own furnace repair business. Business off the books too. Government is legalized pillage. Albert Hubbard Business owners choose to do business off the books for a variety of reasons, mostly to escape government regulations but many do it because they just do. They can't be bothered with all the red tape one must go through in order to start any business, even the simplest business of selling vegetables out of a truck. You're supposed to get a business license, subject your business to health and safety inspections if applicable get a state and federal number in order to collect state sales tax, pay income tax plus withhold the tax of employees and make contributions to the federal social security system if you have people working for you. Many people are simple in lifestyle or start simple businesses that are often part-time but the government rules technically apply regardless of how simple or part-time your business is such that it seems like the effort to comply to government regulations is more tedious than actually running the business itself. Many people just say screw it. What the government doesn't know won't hurt them. As long as they're quiet, low-key, and don't PO too many people off such as nosy neighbors and unhappy customers, there is no reason why some government bureaucrat would discover they are running a business off the books then file some charge on them, usually a tax evasion charge or a violation of health or safety standards. The major reasons people do business off the books are as follows. Avoid paying income tax on money earned. Avoid the paperwork and fees that go with licensing a business then paying into the several programs for employees, social security, workers' compensation, health insurance, etc. Avoid the requirement for checking the identities of illegal immigrants who work for them. Avoid the overall headache of allowing one's life to be regulated by the government and following its rules. In most counties in the United States, the banks will not open a business account for an individual unless they get a business license from the county clerk's office. For unregulated businesses without health and safety inspections, this is as simple as filling out a form, putting an ad in the local newspaper saying you plan to do business with a certain company name and if nobody objects, you pay a fee of about $20 to $100 and get a business license. If it is a regulated business, you have to get a license over and above this generic business license that usually entails an inspection before they will grant you a license. Even if it is a regulated business or you want to open a business account, you simply lie about the type of business you're opening, giving it a generic name like Tony's Consultants, Tony's Services, Tony's Mail Order Sales, etc. Then if you're opening a pizza shop or hair salon which are generally regulated, 
just do it and hang on until you're caught, if ever but hopefully by then, you will have saved enough from these mostly cash businesses to simply leave the area and start again somewhere. Else. Chances are they won't chase you because these aren't really crimes, just low-level civil matters. If they arrest you, you bail out and skip town or wait until they release you then skip. A lot of businesses virtually need merchant credit card status in order to make sales and in order to get merchant credit card status, you need a business account and probably a business license but once you're set up, it goes back to the old maxim, what the government doesn't know doesn't hurt them. The people who give you merchant credit card status, either the bank or another financial company, have nothing to do with the government's business except for reporting on suspicious bank transactions and bank transactions across international borders of over $10,000. You can quietly do business for years without government interference. As long as you hide your profits, don't keep them in accounts where the IRS can seize them, don't own your home or the building your business is operating in, either rent or have them in a friend slash relative's name pretending to pay rent on them. You can operate until and unless the tax people get a whiff of you which could happen but might not then if it does, you have very little out in the open for them to see so read about offshore tax havens and second passports. For most people doing business off the books, it's an all-cash business, they might accept checks only not credit cards which is common with mail order operations or they are contractors or subcontractors who are like phantoms with no set office or workplace like a retail operation. All they have to do is run an ad in the local yellow pages, in the local newspapers, through a local website, pass flyers out door to door, etc. Then when they're called for a job, they get partial payment up front, either cash or check, very few credit cards for service jobs by small timers, get full payment on satisfactory completion then disappear into the ether. It's no big deal to deposit some checks into a personal account or pay a friend $20 to deposit the check into his account thereby laundering it for you. Beyond a phone number in the ad, a website name and the license plate on the company truck where it's easy to fake the address for the vehicle registration or simply lease the vehicle, nobody knows who this person is or where they are located so unless a government bureaucrat is really desperate to find this guy because he is a very shoddy builder or something like that. Do you think some bureaucrats somewhere are going to put in the investigative time to look for phantom service companies like this in order to get the tax money they think they are due even if they have very little concrete evidence? If you flaunt your money, build a big house and all while are off the books, that's a red flag. If you tell others you do business off the books or PO your neighbors, they'll call the cops who might see work equipment on your property ask you for a business license and a contractor's license, which is a regulated business, and if you don't got it, that could be the beginning of an IRS investigation so remember what I said, hide your earnings, don't have anything of value in your name like real estate or boats, airplanes, etc. And you're all set. If they start to investigate you, before they've arrested you for tax evasion, simply load your stuff and your hidden assets into your truck drive a few states away and start up business all over again. The simplest way to do business is to be a subcontractor for a legitimate company. As an independent contractor, they pay you straight money for your services. They don't withhold money for social security or taxes like they do for employees. You go in, do as you're told, they pay you, you cash the check and that's it. You're not registered anywhere as an employee with a certain tax form which shows how much money your employer withheld from you for payment into the income tax system. The most ideal situation is something like this as already explained with the furnace repair example but it's such a good idea, let's look at it again with another example. Suppose company X sells computers. That's their main business, selling computers but in order to appear like a full service company. They also offer repairs and service for their customers even though they don't do these things. Subcontractor Joe does all this stuff. When they get a job, they make up the order then subcontractor Joe comes in every three days or so to pick up new orders. He does the job, charges the company a fee for it. They pay him, tack an extra 10 to 20% on for their commission and everybody's happy. Nobody knows subcontractor Joe exists except for the checks he deposits into his personal bank account and if he sends these checks directly into his offshore account, 
he's home free. Retail customers never see him or have to deal with him. How are the government bureaucrats ever going to discover this guy and his little tax cheating operation? With great difficulty unless somebody squeals on him. Note that the IRS requires that anyone who performs contract labor for a business must have the transaction reported on IRS Form 1099 by the business that pays the guy in order to help the IRS try to keep tabs on undependent contractors and collect their taxes. Service businesses are good but so are sales. Flea markets, garage sales, mail order, and internet sales are all easy ways to sell without having to set up an elaborate retail business. When you receive checks for payment, you can sign them over to a third party either to pay some of your bills or in a deal with a friend who owns a business or has a personal bank account to launder the check for you in exchange for a few bucks. The second way is to go directly to the local bank that the check was drawn on and cash it right there. If you're an independent contractor who does work for businesses and they file Form 1099 on you, because you're an independent contractor doing work for a business, the following method won't work because the check amounts that you are paid will be on Form 1099. When you receive a check for payment from a regular consumer who doesn't file Form 1099 on you, when you go to the bank to deposit it, some banks have a system whereby if you deposit a $500 check but withdraw $300 in cash at the same time, they mark it as a net check deposit of $200 so to the tax people, on face, without doing an extensive examination of your bank statements, it just looks like a deposit of a $200 check. Finally, use a friend's account or your own account using false identification to deposit some of the checks you are paid to keep them off the books. Business off the books 3. A wise and frugal government, which shall leave men free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement, and shall not take from their mouths the bread they have earned, this is the sum of good government. Thomas Jefferson If you're planning to do business off the books, the concept of privacy goes hand in hand with it. You have to try to live a private life and avoid getting your name in computer databases of all kinds as much as possible. Smart small business owners can maximize the business deductions on their taxes but truly self-reliant people don't play the government's game and choose to operate outside of the system. Technically, Doing business in what is called off the books or on the black market is illegal but in a market economy and in the way business was done before the imposition of all these rules and taxes, this is the natural way to do business, person to person without a government bureaucracy backing it all up. There's nothing morally wrong or criminal about it. The social security system pays out retirement and disability money to people who have worked a certain amount of time and contributed a certain amount of money but in another way it's a tool of control. The government wants to track your every move to make sure it gets its fair share of taxes. The Bank Secrecy Act and other laws since 9-11s have made it easier for the government to snoop on banking transactions in the guise of pursuing terrorists and drug dealers but it's really to find people who don't pay the legal amount of income taxes and take their money. The IRS physically investigates people by doing a drive-by of where they live, seeing how big the house is what kinds of vehicles they drive, etc. If you're conspicuously living large, your chances of being caught by the IRS are much higher than if you live a low-key lifestyle acting average even if you're swimming in dough. The law states that every case of not filing a tax return for a particular year could result in five years in jail plus a half million dollars in fines. Income tax evasion is fraudulently filling out the tax return with the intent on defrauding the government of tax money as opposed to making an honest mistake on your tax which still makes you liable for taxes but not the criminal charge. Most self-employed people fill out tax returns and take fake deductions or overinflate them. This is fine as long as you don't go overboard because this is one of the red flags they're looking for in businesses to audit, somebody who takes a lot of business deductions. Scheming is the term used to denote that you occasionally pocket some of the money you are paid, usually in cash, for your products or services without declaring it as income. The IRS has made up formulas regarding the typical average income to expense ratio for most businesses so if you either don't declare enough income through scheming, take high deductions or both, your ratio will be significantly different from the IRS's standard ratio which means your return will be pulled for an audit.
the lesson is that if you choose to do business on the books, don't get too greedy. Keep the cheating moderate. The lowest level ways many people do business off the books is to operate a second part-time business totally off the books or work a second job totally off the books. They might do barter for goods and services rather than exchange cash. Far and away, most people who do business off the books are people who run small businesses that provide a service or sell something, usually by mail order or over the internet. A good cash business is something like a lawn mowing slash garden care or chimney cleaning business. The cost per session is often low enough, under $100, to justify a cash payment but in my business dealings in the past, I found that a lot of people want to pay by check. It's your call as to whether you'll accept checks or not. They could bounce. If the checks are made out to you personally as opposed to a fictitious business name, you're all set. Just deposit them in your personal savings account. Some people operate totally off the books but most have a cover, either a day job or a first business which they pay taxes on to make everything look legit then have their other business on the side which is off the books. This side business could be their main business and the other business just a sham for cover which is the way organized crime people typically operate. They make their money in criminal activities but run a restaurant or a plumbing business as their front. If you work for someone, there are ways to get side benefits without increasing the value of your paycheck which would bump you up into a higher income category. Ask for fringe benefits in lieu of pay, bonuses, or raises, a car on an expense account, health insurance, etc. Ask for extra product in lieu of pay which you use for yourself or sell on your own. Do some independent contracting jobs for some of the clientele at work and don't declare the money. The pre-printed envelopes and peel-away labels the IRS gives you with your tax form is designed to make the sorting job easier for them. If you send the return in another envelope, this means your return will have to be sorted by hand which could keep it out of the tax audit loop. Unless you're desperate for your tax return money, do it this way. Some people live transient lives. They get a job anywhere, make up any old social security number, lie on the withholding form, claiming a lot of dependents such that the withholding amount is minimized, keep the job for several months to a year then move on without ever filing tax returns. Business off the books for some people believe that the United States is becoming a totalitarian bureaucracy where everybody is supposed to follow a bunch of rules set up by the politicians in Washington but this is not freedom. There is no room for people to live outside the system if they want to. The government says they must follow its rules. By this definition, the country is more totalitarian than free. When supposedly freedom-loving governments impose measures that unjustly take things from people as in excessive taxes or make them do things like wear seatbelts in cars or go to war against their will, the truly free people feel a responsibility to not take it, even if the system punishes them. As long as you don't violate the rights of others, you should have the freedom to do as you please without governments interfering with your life. Good governments don't control people. In a good society, the individual is free as long as he doesn't impose on the rights of others but nowadays in most of our free societies, governments have a repressive amount of control and brainwashing powers over most citizens through propaganda. By the words of the Declaration of Independence, the government is supposed to be the servant of the people not its ruler. Free enterprise is good but the two biggest impediments to it are Government rules and regulations Taxes